recently at Groom Expo, I did, I groomed an American Cocker for the first time. And I was like waiting in line to have my photo taken. And this woman, uh, I think just like a spectator, she came up to me and said, can I take a picture of your Cocker? I just, I love its bevels. And I just was shocked because there was obviously open level competitors with their Cocker Spaniels who are far better than I am. But she wanted to take my picture of my, my dog and appreciated, you know, how it looked. And I have never, I've never done bevels on a cocker before, so I had no idea what I was doing. But I was like, I was just very appreciative that she really liked my groom. So it was, it was, it was nice. Well, it doesn't help that you're a good-looking guy. Uh, so <laughs> that might have been an excuse to get a picture with you as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> So she used the, she used she used the competitive like style of bevels in her question, but that that might have had something to do with it as well. <laughs> this is your host Ryan Alvarez of Grooming Unleashed. Welcome to episode five. Our guest for this episode just uh, decided that he was going to get into competitive grooming after, in his teenage years, he was very competitive in the junior pro circuit of dog handling. And within just one year of competitive grooming, this young man has now won up and coming groomer of the year for 2019. I introduce a very humble, a very polite, a very talented Brian Cuoco. Hey, hey, you found us. This is Grooming Unleashed where we learn and talk about the ins and outs of the pet grooming industry. From pro groomers and salon owners to show hosts and dog handlers, we'll jump into the stressful and crazy stories of the day-to-day -day operations of the crazy world of grooming. I'm your host, Ryan Alvarez. Our podcast is sponsored by Loyalty Pet Products. Loyalty Pet Products provides quality grooming tools and accessories at an affordable price. From shears to stripping knives to smocks and hammocks, Loyalty Pet Products has an essential tool to fit your expectation and style. Use code UNLEASHED to save 10% today. Loyalty Pet Products, uniquely designed, beautifully priced. This is Ryan Alvarez here with guest Brian Cuoco for Grooming Unleashed, episode five. Brian, I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. So let's get right to it. In less than a year, you have competed in your first ever competition. You've been recognized as a, as a certified master groomer. And now, three weeks ago at Hershey uh, Grooming Expo, Barkley nominated you for up and coming groomer of the year. Um, how can you yeah. possibly have a better 2020? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I know. I feel like, um, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I really don't. Well, that's good. I, I can hear the joy in your voice, though. I mean, uh, let's so let's let's backtrack a little bit. So I know, and we'll get into this question actually again later. But um, you know, so when you finally got up the nerve to do your first competition, did you even fathom being even nominated for up and coming groomer of the year a year later, less than a year later? No, I really didn't. I honestly didn't even know what the Barkley Awards were or that they even existed. So honestly, I had, I had no idea. Gotcha. Now, what, what caused you to really want to go for your certified master groomer certificate? Um, pretty, so pretty much uh, what happened was I ended up, go, I went to a seminar. I went to Sue Zeko's um, seminar on the Bichon because I was struggling with the the Bichon trim and especially the the head how to trim the head so I went there and I realized that after you know listening to her seminar and just being at um a competition that um it, this is something that I I really wanted to get involved with and dive into and um so I kind of like I sought out Sue Sue's Echo and um, she led me to uh, Phil Schaefmeyer, and he 
um, pretty much told me, you're going to be certified. And I said, okay, teach me what you know. And so it kind of just like snowballed into there. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Phil, Philip, uh, you know, is somebody that my wife looks up to a lot. Uh, you know, my, my wife, uh, her specialty is poodles and she just, she loves Philip with the, the poodle breed, but, um, you know, I had a chance to actually talk to you and Philip and Mackenzie and, you know, basically the whole Love Groomers team at, at Hershey and you guys are just so kind and nice. And I, I think, uh, groomers out there that are listening need, need to understand that you guys are down to earth people that are willing to give a minute of your time to help groomers in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I feel like, like come, I feel like people like come and come up and talk to me, approach me. I'm da I'm down for, for talking to you. If you have any questions, like we're, all of us are very approachable. All of us want to help, want to teach. So definitely like feel free to, feel free to, you know, to come up to us and say something. Awesome. As long as they give you uh, an alcoholic beverage for your time, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. That always helps. Yeah, yeah. It always helps. It always helps. Uh, so what are some of the challenges that you've encountered in your first year of grooming competitively? Um, some of the challenges are definitely just finding dogs and finding quality dogs. That's been the hardest thing. Um, dogs have fallen through days before competition. Um, but on, it's just honestly finding good quality dogs and especially being like an entry intermediate level. Most people don't trust you to trim their dog that's currently being shown. Um, so it, it, that honestly has been the biggest challenge just, is just finding dogs to compete with and, and, and having breeders and owners that will let you take their dog for a weekend and trust you. Right. Yeah. I feel like there needs to be like a, a holding cell uh, with yeah. like people that are around the competitions every year to kind of let the coat grow out, knowing that there's going to be a competition in their area and that the dog has good posture and it's not going to be a hellion, you know, mm -hmm. on stage. And, uh, you know, a lot of things factor into that. I can only imagine, you know, knowing that you're going to be, well, it's, it's trust on you too. You're going to trust that the dog's going to uh, be there for you for one. Mm hmm you know, I can only imagine that you're you're ready to go into a pretty big competition where you're maybe doing two or three different competitions and you find out the night before that the dog's not available. So you're scrambling because you've yeah. raised entry fee. It's something that you want to do. Um, and it's stressful. I can only imagine how stressful that is. Yeah, for sure. Um, or just like when you when you pick up the dog and you realize there's holes in the coat, it's missing a piece of its ear hair because it chewed it off it's just like things that you don't the owner doesn't tell you and you don't know so it's just how you're going to make it work and it's, it, that's it's like i said it's been the biggest challenge is finding dogs gotcha okay yeah uh, so I, and i told you uh this leading up to the week that i was going to do research on you and stuff and i joked around with you about an hour ago saying that mm -hmm. you know i was able to find kaylee cuoco and brianna cuoco yeah uh, you, you guys are all good looking, all three of you. However, the, <laughs> net, worth, the net worth between the three of you is, is uh, slightly different. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you were able to find a, an article for me, which, would, which did help. So we're going to go back a little bit. Okay. Uh, so when you were 17, uh, you, went yeah. to, you went to Westminster for the junior handling division. Yep. That was the championship, and you were showing Bassett Hounds. So tell yeah. us a little about that and how you got into that yeah absolutely so um i uh how i got started in um showing dogs was i was 12 years old and my dad worked with this woman who bred dogs and she uh brought some puppies into his work and, and my dad said oh my son loves dogs um and she said okay we'll bring him to this dog show so we ended up going to a dog show and you know, ever since then I was hooked and I had just shown many different breeds and then I found um, the Basset Hound. So, um, yeah, and then I just really started showing that dog um, through my junior's career and just really did really well with her, 
qualified for Yukonuba a couple of times, Westminster a couple of times, um, and just kind of, you know, went from there. So now you were quoted as saying that you wanted to become a, profe a professional handler and do it for a living. So do you still show? And if not, is that something that you want to get back into the ring eventually? Yeah. Um, so at the time, I definitely did want to become a professional handler. But I, um, you know, like I feel like things kind of took a different turn in life. I just I ended up going to college and stopped working for uh, the professional handler that I was working for at the time and just kind of focused on education. And so I got a degree in uh, business management and then went right into working in uh, the financial industry uh, after college. And then I realized that that's really not where I belong and that's, it wasn't where I was happy. So and what I had, was, I what, what was that job? What was that job? I worked um, at John Hancock okay. uh, in mutual funds. Yeah. Doing mutual funds and the, the, the typical like nine to five Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I thought that that was, you know, get, that's how it was supposed to be. You're supposed to go to college, get a nine to five job and, you know, do that whole thing. But I just, I really wasn't happy. Right. And I knew I needed to get back into, into doing something with dogs. Um, but at the same time, being a professional handler is extremely grueling. It's, uh, you know, long days, like early mornings, late nights. It's, it's a lot of work and you're responsible for a string of 10 to 20 dogs. That's when I, I worked for multiple professional handlers. We had 10 to 20 dogs on any given weekend. It's, it's, just, it's a lot of work and it's, you know, it's not always the biggest payoff. Mm -hmm. um, so um, not everyone can be a Kay Pizer in the world. Yeah, and yeah, she's for sure, yeah. She's really given up a lot. We've actually gotten to know her the past year or so, and she just looks exhausted, but it's something that she's passionate about. Yeah, um, for sure. It's, it's a hard job, and you're living on the road. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew, I, and I, having, you know, did that, have, having done that and worked for handlers, I, I knew exactly what I would get myself into, so... I kind of took a different approach and I was like, why not look into grooming? So um, I kind of just explored that avenue, you know? So now how did you start when you say that you explore that avenue? So let's say that somebody's listening and they are considering getting into grooming. How, how, where do you go? Like, what was the first thing that you did? Yeah. So uh, I mean, from, from showing dogs since I was 12 and working for for professional handlers, I had a basic understanding and knowledge of the breeds, breed trims, stuff like that. And I kind of, I had a no, I had some sort of knowledge on how to cut a groom for the show ring, but I had no knowledge on how to groom pets. So, um, again, my, uh, I was, I was really fortunate enough that a woman that, um, my, my dad had worked with, she, her daughter owned a um, doggy daycare and a grooming salon so she kind of you know told my dad about it I reached out to her daughter and she interviewed me and said she would take me on as like an apprentice and kind of teach me how to pet groom um, so honestly like if if you're looking to start in the grooming industry I would just try to find you know a grooming salon or someone that will will take you on Gotcha. That's, I've heard that advice before. And then people worry about, you know, obviously working for free and getting taken advantage of, but it's, you have to take that chance at some point. To, uh, you know, and I talked to, you know, uh, our, our recent guest, which is Laura Jane. Um, mm -hmm. she, she said that her best friend, who is now one of her employees, um, has grown so much because what she did, she started uh, going to the Humane Society and grooming, you know, rescue dogs and learning that way. Um, because a lot of those dogs, their, their temperament's not good or, you know, they just have a lot of skin irritation. So it's a perfect learning curve right off the bat. Yeah, no, for sure. And like when I first started, I worked for free. She, she taught me and I didn't get paid. And then it moved into, she would pay me for, let's say I work eight hours. She would only pay me for the, for four hours of working. So you, you have to be willing to not get a paycheck 
you know, for a while because you're, you're, you, if you want to learn this trade and that's, I feel like that's how I was. I didn't get paid and I, cause I wanted to learn and I had to, you know, deal with it and it was fine. Cause I, I learned. Right. <clears throat> no, it's great. Now your, your Basset Hounds co-owner called you one of the nicest young men that she had ever met. So in a fierce grooming competitive world, what keeps you in good spirits and kind of low key? Um, honestly, I just think being surrounded by, you know, good people and having a good team behind me. Um, yeah. And just trying to, and just staying humble and staying, staying appreciative of what I have. Um, yeah. I just try to be nice to everyone. Um, yeah. So. Well, it's definitely the, the, the couple times that I've met you in person, it's just, it kind of flows off of you. Uh, you can kind yeah. of tell right off the bat that you are a, a, a nice person. So, uh, kudos to you on that. It's, definitely a quality that you know it's it's you, you can't fake it <laughs> yeah i appreciate that thank you yeah i really i just want to try to help people and just, you know i know where i came from so just be nice and it's help awesome. people out yeah awesome. so what what yeah. now you mentioned that you were working with john hancock and i'm sure that you're you took a huge pay decrease to become a dog groomer so other than that what would you say was the hardest part to do that transition um, the, there was a lot. I had to, I was living on my own and I had to move back home. Um, and just really just like giving up my time to learn, learn something new. I worked, I, w I was working, uh, six days a week. I just had Sundays off. That was my only day off. I just, I just really wanted to learn and I would do whatever was necessary to to be the best at, at this craft. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Laura Jane, who I mentioned uh, earlier, she, she wanted me to, to pose a question for you. She recalled yeah. that the first time that she ever saw you compete was at the New England show last year, which would have been 2018. Mm -hmm. And she just remembers a new competitor walking in there being so smooth right out the gate and you won every division that you entered. Where she wanted to know if you were nervous or if you had confidence in your in your skill. Um, I was extremely nervous, to be honest. <laughs> I knew that <laughs> yeah, was that was my that was my first competition, and I also was certifying to become a master groomer in, during uh, for that competition. Um, so it was kind of like two two things at once. Um, I was very 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 nervous yeah for sure <laughs> all right so now take taking that and kind of reliving what how you were feeling right now what um think about the groomer who is maybe really talented in a small town and they either watch these things on you know groomer tv or they've been to a trade show and they've watched the competition and, and they're saying to themselves i'm not ready what do you tell them to take that step um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you just, I feel like you just have to do it. Like I was extremely nervous. I didn't want to do it, but I knew I had to. And I just took that, that step, that leap of faith. And, and, uh, it just kind of got me where, where I am now. And I just feel like you just need to bite the bullet and, and just do it. Right. And, and again, I, I do want to congratulate you on, on being nominated and the winner of the up and coming groomer of the year for 2019. So my question to you is, uh, who were some of your idols when you got into the industry? I know you mentioned Philip Schaefmeyer, you mentioned Sue Zeko. Is there anyone else that you want to mention that was kind of an idol when you got into this industry? Yeah, definitely. Also just like Mackenzie Murphy, she, I definitely watched her and, was in awe of her work and uh just you know was kind of honored to finally get to meet her and get to know her as a person so definitely her um yeah for sure and then definitely obviously Suze Eckler I went to her seminar and she uh introduced me to Phil who has mentored me uh this whole way so for sure yeah uh, so what, um, what would you tell a groomer who is extremely talented, but they just take way too long on a single dog? Because obviously these competitions are timed, which I know was an adjustment for my wife uh, that very first time that she competed. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, let's say, let, let's take the competition out of it. Let's say that they're in a shop 
and they're very talented. They do exquisite work. Uh, what do you tell them to not, you know, kind of dishearten them with how talented they are, but at the same time, you know, it is a business and you need to get dogs in and out. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's something I struggle with too. Um, at, I recently, I got, um, a new job and it's more, it's a commission, more of commission based and more you need, you really only get like two, three hours to do a dog. So I, I mean, I struggle with that too, because I want to make every dog look the best I possibly can make it, but sometimes it might take longer. It depends if they're magic, their coat type, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like you need to find some shortcuts that will help make the groom faster. So like definitely just like using maybe clip combs more, stuff like that. But um, I don't think it's bad to take your time at all. I really don't. But I understand that time is money, but also charging your worth too. So if you're going to take longer on a dog, you could maybe charge more because you're, they're going to get a better groom. You right. Know? right. And then that's the, that's the thing. And, you know, when I have my, my wife on as a guest, that's what we're going to get into as far as, you know, there's a difference between a show cut and just grooming fluffy for the holidays. Yeah, and, you know, it's, uh, trust me, no one wants to send a dog home when they know that they can do so much better, but you also don't want to send a dog home that you worked on three hours and get 65 bucks for or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a hit or miss. Now I did mention the, I did mention the timed piece of the competition. So mm -hmm. same, same question. Let's say you've seen somebody that's actually been competing, uh, the last year with you and mm -hmm. you realize that maybe they aren't really good with the time factor as well. What do you do to kind of shave off some more time? Because there's different rules in the competition ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, to shave off some more time. I feel like I just I feel like prep work is really important. So if your dog is prepped correctly, that's going to save you a lot of time when you step into that competition ring, and just making sure that your sanitary, your pads, all those things, all the things that can be done prior to competition are done. Cause so I feel mm -hmm. like that will save you a lot of time as well. I've heard quite a bit lately that, that bathing is key. Like what, I mean, that, that bath and how the dog is dried and everything is crucial. Oh yeah, for sure. And I've definitely learned my lesson with that. When I first started competing, uh, some of my critiques were that my prep work wasn't um, you know, up to par and I had to take a step back and look at what I was doing. And it really does start in the bathtub, just really scrubbing that dog, letting it sit, then blowing, force drying that dog, and then really stretch drying it with heat. And I've learned, I've learned my lesson. It's cost me placements, cost me wins. So I've definitely learned how important the bath is and how important, uh, prep work and, and blow drying and, and stretch drying that coat is excellent yeah so what um what would you say is one or two of the best resources that you've used to further your career in the past year it could be bix uh sorry bix books videos podcasts seminars things like that i think obviously the best the best resources i feel are seminars but and also the best resource i've used is just having a mentor i feel like you need to find someone who's been in this industry for a while who knows how to groom dogs um i just feel like having a mentor is key and having someone that's willing to teach you it, it's you can't beat that so i feel like the best resource is just is just finding a mentor and someone that's willing to to help you right and we w i've mentioned this in the past before would you would you agree that uh, you know, sometimes when you don't win, that's when you actually learn the most when you're competing. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's when I don't win and then, and then I wait for that critique and I get that critique and, and I, and you know, they tell me what I, what I did right, what I did wrong. And then I'm excited to go back in the ring, uh, at the next show and fix, fix what I did wrong to get that win. So I feel like, yeah, definitely not winning has helped me the most because I'm eager and I, I, I want that win and I know how to correct it now. Do you have your, uh, your, your up and coming grooming of the ward, like next to your workstation right now? No, it's actually, it's at home. <laughs> Cause the dog will not I have it at home. home yeah. 
So do you think, uh, you know, and this is, this is, wasn't even one of my questions, but it just made yeah. me think, like, do you think like that some of the, you know, your clients that have been coming to you consistently now that, you know, they know that you've won, do you think that they, it, their word of mouth is even more, it's tenfold now because they're like, hey, the, 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 my groomer who grooms Fluffy uh, just won up and coming groomer of the year. Do you feel that way or, or kind of like a level of celebrity a little bit? Um, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I don't feel like any level of celebrity. I'm very just like down to earth and humble about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I wish. I wish. <laughs> um, I just, I feel like it, it definitely doesn't hurt and it helps. And it helps when you have my boss has been promoting me on their Instagram page and their, their Facebook page as the winner of this award. And it definitely helps, but I mean, I don't feel any different to be honest. I'm still the next, after I win the award the next day, I go back to shave down. So it's, it's no different, honestly. I don't feel any different. And, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't see it getting to your head. I just meant mm -hmm. like, do, I guess, I guess put it this way. If you feel like, uh, it's, this is me, my whole, my whole goal is to try to get more people in the competition ring. So yeah, I feel it's going to better your business slash number of clients with the more accolades that you get from going to these things. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I really do feel like if the more awards and accolades and trophies you have, it obviously looks, looks great on your part. And obviously your clients are going to brag about, Oh, the, you know, my groomer has won this show and that show. It, so it, obviously, yeah, I feel like it definitely looks great on your part to to have these awards and these trophies for sure. And I feel like you'll get definitely get more clients, you know, absolutely. Do you have aspirations to have your own grooming shop? I, I do and I did, but I, uh, but I feel like now that I'm traveling so much and I'm on the Love Groomers um team as a sponsored groomer it's really hard to own your own shop and right now you know I kind of like just being an employee just having my kind of I can make my own hours I can decide how many dogs I want to do each day and it's just very like stress stress free um because it's just my schedule is just been absolutely crazy so it, I mean I think eventually maybe down the road when I stop competing but for right now Honestly, I, I, I just like kind of being an employee. Gotcha. And congratulations yeah. on being selected as an ambassador for iGroom as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was very, uh, I was very surprised about that. And I'm very excited about it as well. Well, good. What is the, uh, what's the biggest mistake that you have learned in the past year and learned from? The biggest mistake, um, that I would, I have to go back to prep work. It's, being called out on not on not stretch stretch drying the dog correctly, I really, you know, the biggest mistake, yeah, was not was not drying that dog correctly. And then when I when I went to scissor it, it was curling underneath, and I got called out by uh, by it uh, by the judge, and I never never made that mistake again. <laughs> not sure. Well, it, you know, you got to learn from your mistakes, but you got to make them in yeah. order to learn from them. So what? So what is your biggest pet peeve uh, at the shop from a client standpoint or dog standpoint? What's your biggest pet peeve? Um, I would say just making sure that the dog comes in on, on a regular basis because I don't want to have to shave a matted dog. I don't want to have to demat a matted dog. I just really stress the importance of grooming your dog on a regular, you know, four to six week basis. Cause it's just going to make my life easier, your life easier and the dog, you know, just not so stressful in the dog either. And what is your fantasy amazing client? Like your absolute perfect client? Um, I think just someone who I love, like I obviously I come from my background's dog show. So just having someone who wants me to put a show trim on a dog and just, you know have like a full coated cocker spaniel or something like that, and this says make it look like a show dog. That's my fantasy. I just love, love like the, sh the I love dog shows and show dogs, and just want that client to be like make my dog look like a show dog. Awesome. Yeah.
Uh, so, and this is, this might be hard for you and I might make it harder for you if I take a, an element away, but to this point, what's been your proudest moment in the grooming industry? Um, I think obviously just winning of the year has definitely been. We're going to take that away. <laughs> oh, take, okay. I'm taking that one away. <laughs> <laughs> taking that away. Um, my most, I feel like, okay, my second most proudest moment. Um, <laughs> I just, I feel like just becoming a sponsored groomer so early in my career it's just something that I've I didn't even think I would have that opportunity right now and just uh just kind of just you know having people notice me and want to sponsor me mm -hmm. is is really unbelievable and I really can't fathom it and I'm just so appreciative of it and obviously Sam Nelson sponsors us for love groomers so it's just kind of crazy that all this has happened and um so that's definitely my honestly my proudest moment is just being sponsored by love groomers gotcha that's awesome. yeah sam sam's done a great job and I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with sam so it's uh you know i think he was in the industry well on his own uh two years before we started and we just kind of clicked the first time that we saw each other and again it's just um two like-minded business people but at the same time he's a very nice gentleman and that always helps Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, he's been so helpful, and yeah, he's just a great guy. Agree, agree. What is the best compliment that you have ever received? Um, I think re I recently at Groom Expo, I did. I groomed an American cocker for the first time, and I was like waiting in line to have my photo taken. And this woman, uh, I think, just like a spectator she came up to me and said can i take a picture of your cocker i just i love its bevels and i just was shocked because there was obviously open level competitors with their cocker spaniels who are far better than i am but she wanted to take my picture of my, my dog and appreciated you know how it looked and i have never i've never done bevels on a cocker before so i had no idea what i was doing but i was like i was just very appreciative that she really liked my groom so it was it was, it was nice well, it doesn't help that you're a good-looking guy. Uh, so <laughs> that might have been an excuse to get a picture with you as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> it helps that she used the she used she used the competitive like style of bevels in her question, but that that might have had something to do with it as well. But no, your your grooming your grooming is fantastic. Thank um, you. Thanks. When we first, w you came by our loyalty pet products booth uh, towards the end of the show in Ohio. Uh huh. And my wife was like, uh, "You were looking at our travel bags and our smocks and stuff." And yeah, my wife was like, "Oh, he'd look really good in our smock." And your bulging biceps wouldn't fit. So I was. <laughs> Oh, well. I know I was disappointed. <laughs> uh, ladies out there, if you get a chance, check out uh, Brian's Instagram. You won't be disappointed. So, uh, and I, I might as well ask that question now while we're on the topic. How how big does fitness play in your life? Yeah, no, it, honestly, it's my second hobby, like grooming, then gym. That's like honestly what I do. I work all day, then I come home take care of the dogs and then go right to the gym. Like fitness is really important to me. And I feel like it, it's helped a lot in, in just grooming dogs. Like I'm able to lift these huge goldens labs. Like I just, I really have just developed a passion for fitness and being healthy and, you know, just looking, looking good, you know? I couldn't have planned a better segue because my next question is what is your favorite lunch to eat while you groom? <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that was perfect. Um, so yeah, I, I know, I know a lot of groomers, they, especially where I work, they all, you know, go, go out for lunch or get like takeout or, you know, buy whatever. But I, yeah, I always bring my lunch. Um, it's pretty bland, pretty basic. I usually do like a grilled chicken or um, some like a ground turkey or something and like broccoli or asparagus or something like that. So very basic and very bland. It's boring. Well, you're, yeah, but it's healthy. That's the yeah. thing. I try, I try, and then I eat, like, kind of have some snacks throughout the day just to keep the metabolism going, but, yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard to, to, it is very hard time to even eat while you're working. Yeah, that's something I'm, I'm, I've already got it on the schedule to talk to an, a, a nutritionist 
Yeah. Um, and you know, my, my wife just started to go to a chiropractor and a massage therapist because she's been grooming since she was 12 and she's, she's 27 right now. And it's already starting to affect her a little bit. And, uh, you know, you do, you have a shelf life as a groomer. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like working out has definitely, you know, increased that shelf life. And I, I feel it too. Like my back, at the end of the day, my back will hurt. My, sh- my shoulder's been bothering me. So I know I actually need to check into looking into getting a, a massage or a massage therapist, stuff like that. Cause it, it, it's tough on your body and it kills your body. And I feel like definitely just like working out and doing some cardio lifting weights has, has really helped. Right. No. And, and, you know, another future guest uh, is going to be my brother, who's an accountant. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I believe those things are tax write-offs. So going to get, get a massage done as and I know it's kind of a gray area, but even possibly going to the gym can be a write-off as well because your 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 job is is physical labor. So yeah, um, yeah. So stay tuned, everybody. I'm, that's on the slate as well. I have everything to make this industry better. So I, that's who I'm trying to interview for you guys. Uh, what what breed do you groom that forces you out of your comfort zone? I know you mentioned that you did a cocker for the first time, but even mm-hmm. at the shop, what's what's a breed that you're like, oh crap, here we go? Yeah, um, no, I have a great story for that. So oh. a breed, yeah, no. Um, so I recently um, acquired um, this woman, and she as a client, and she has two Bethingtons. I've never ever groomed a Bethington before I've only touched I've touched one at the competitions I've never groomed them um <laughs> from what I from my understanding before I groomed them their skin is very thin you can it nicks very easily and their coat is very very soft um so this woman she she gets them shaved down with like a five or a seven blade but she still wants that Bethington face and that that you know that head um Mm -hmm. so you know i i honestly had no idea what i was doing um and i i really i did my best to make that 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 face and that little lamb look but it just was it didn't come out great the hair is really really hard to work with and i have like a whole new appreciation for groomers who groom bedlingtons in the competition ring because it's extremely difficult and um, and she wasn't happy with the trim, and I had to go back and do it, redo it a couple of times. And finally, she was satisfied, but still, you know, wasn't a hundred percent happy. So, I it's that's something that I need to to work on and learn. And she's, I mean, she's gonna come back to me, and we're, I'm gonna try next time to make it better. But it, I I do not look forward to doing Bellingtons at all. They are extremely difficult. So who who in the industry comes to mind when you think about going to for help with Bedlingtons? I would honestly Mackenzie Murphy because she say, yeah, yeah she she's a she is the Bedlington person I feel like hands down you know she's killing it in the all of the pure break class right now and she yeah she's just like she knows what's going on with the Bedlington so I feel like I definitely need to to hit her up and ask her for some help because I I will admit I don't even know I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I try right. yeah I try it's how you get better man it's how you get better yeah what, absolutely what, what's your what's your favorite br- breed to groom and why um honestly I love sporting dogs um setters springers showing, right what'd you say that goes back to showing like the showing of the dogs right yeah yeah so when I was uh, when I was uh, showing I worked for a professional handler and she specialized in sporting dogs so I really just like honestly just got like a, a, a fondness for for all of them I love like the English setter Gordon setter the springers all that stuff so I I, I, know, I really do love like grooming a sporting dog good uh, let's uh, let's get down and dirty here what's the nastiest thing that has happened to you while you've been grooming um probably a dog just shitting on the table for sure like <laughs> force drying it and it just decides to to crap all over you as when the force dryer is on and it just kind of goes everywhere 
Oh, uh, yeah. Gabriel yeah. had a similar story, but it didn't happen to him. It happened to uh, one of his coworkers at the time. And so he just he just watched it all happen. So Yeah. No, I've definitely it's definitely happened to me a couple of times. So yeah, it's pretty nasty. What uh what would you like to see happen in the future for grooming and showing competitively? Like a change. What what's something that you would change? Um I think going forward i feel like um just like more education and more seminars and just uh maybe also like with the whole uh, like entry to intermediate to open just maybe increase the wins so like i had actually i had this conversation with, with todd shelley he was asking me if i was ready to go into open and i i point blank said no i'm not ready to go into open yet and he was saying, yeah, like, I think that there should be maybe like, you know, three wins to entry to intermediate, but intermediate to, intermediate to open, you should do maybe like six wins. So mm -hmm. I think that would be a great concept and idea to explore. And I feel like I honestly would love having to get six wins to go into open because I love competing. But, uh, but if you move up too fast, I'm not ready for open. I'm not ready to go there. And I'm, and I feel like it might be pointless for me to try to compete right now so I kind of maybe want to see the whole the number of wins change <clears throat> now do you feel like if you go to open and you you don't place for a while do you feel like that that's gonna maybe kind of lose your momentum a little bit um I think I definitely might get discouraged yeah but I also feel like just having my face out there and just and keep going will will be good for me so obviously it's not obviously no one wants to lose um but i just think staying in the game and having keeping my face out in the industry will 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 pay off yeah no totally agree and yeah in episode four uh laura jane and i were talking about making a suggestion box and we we're gonna make todd shelley wear it around the expo next year so yeah, i like that idea a lot yeah that's a great idea oh, I'm yeah sure, i'm sure he'll be thrilled when i bring it up to him <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure yeah uh, so we're, 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 we're going to get to some of the fun questions now, and uh, we're actually doing really well on time, so I want to appreciate you, uh, you know, kind of getting right to it and everything. What, what celebrity's dog would you love to groom just to meet the celebrity? Um, I'd probably say Reese Witherspoon. I just, I'm a huge fan. I love, like, I love all her movies. Um, so yeah, probably her dogs for sure. What's your favorite movie of hers? It's actually a really, really old movie. It's called, um, I think it's called Man in the Moon. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's her, for, I think it's like her first huge acting role that she got. And um, yeah, that's my favorite movie of hers for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, she's like a 12-year-old girl who like falls in love with her sister's boyfriend or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great, it's a great movie. And it's like, I didn't Not expect. Not that I've seen it. To, Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> not that I've watched it like 20 times or anything. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's great. So um, imagine that you are a new groomer and you only have $500 to spend on must-have tools to get started. What do you spend that $500 on? Definitely um, like a, ooh, 500. I, obviously scissors. You need, you need a good pair of straights, curves chunkers um a slicker brush um what else uh i feel like that might be your 500 right there well it depends good it, yeah it depends on the companies and everything but um yeah what about uh clippers oh yeah clip oh yeah obviously like a good uh, yeah clippers some blades um a Bavera for sure um and then I feel like you could use some sprays but they're not necessary okay That's um good to know yeah yeah I feel like the basics are just having some uh, some good scissors some blades clippers stuff like that for sure do you happen to remember the very first shampoo that you used on your very first dog that you groomed um the very first shampoo it was just uh, it was out of um a pet edge catalog it's just like the pet edge 
brand brand gotcha. shampoo yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just trying to get you to remember all the way back then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Speed round. Okay. All right. So as soon as, as soon as an answer comes to your head, go ahead and spit it out. Okay. Favorite color. Blue. Favorite TV show growing up. Um, the middle. <laughs> Excuse me. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, favorite grooming show competition? Like, where do you like to go the most? Um, I think I like my own backyard going to the New England shows. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're in, you're in Boston, right? Yes, yes, in New England. Yeah, for sure. I love my own backyard. I have to come visit you sometime. I hear that that's an awesome town. Yeah, it's great. Uh, favorite quote? Um, actually, I recently um an old uh client friend of mine told he, he was a client of um the handler i used to work for he told me you know don't get too big headed don't get too high up there because when you fall and not if you fall but when you fall it's going to hurt harder when falling from a from a higher distance than from a shorter distance so just you know stay humble don't get too high headed too high headed too to up up there you know because it's going to hurt when you fall gotcha yeah. favorite favorite alcoholic beverage um just like a vodka soda tito's <laughs> tito's yeah favorite snack while you groom um probably like some sort of candy um like reese something like that some candy like that okay uh, favorite thing to listen to while you're grooming? Um, just I listen. I usually have like uh, we have Alexa, so I put on uh, just like today's hits. Gotcha. And then last one of the speed round. What is your favorite word that's innocently dirty? I can't. Um, I don't think I can tell you like one of the words because then Laura stole it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'll tell it to you, but you got to try to think of something else. It was moist. Oh yeah, that is kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. I have no idea. Yeah, that. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll take we'll take out the, the innocently dirty one. What's your favorite word? What do you find um, you're saying a lot? Probably. I feel like I've been saying for sure a lot. For sure. All right. Yeah. Right. That's two words, but we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, uh, so a couple more questions here and, and then we're going to wrap it up what do you what do you plan on right. do you plan on holding seminars yourself and uh, what is it that you really want to teach yeah that, no that's a great question i'm actually doing my first seminar at intergroom this year um pretty excited pretty nervous about it um and pretty, it's um gonna be um doing it with phil just as to have some backup just in case there's any questions that I don't know how to answer and um you know just just in case it's always good to have another person there but um right. it is go going to be about um we're going to groom two dogs the same breed I don't know what breed maybe a Springer maybe a Westie Bedlington. stuff like that a and we're huh a Bedlington yeah no 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 Bedlingtons no thank you <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, so we're going to do one dog in sh uh, show trim or the trim you would do in a competition. And then we're going to do uh, the other dog in the pet trim, pet version. Um, so pretty much, I just want to show people kind of both, both ways of doing the same, the, the trim on the same dog. Because I feel like, I feel like, um, a lot of people who go to these grooming competitions, not necessarily they're going to be competing or they want to compete. They, they own their salons, they work at salons, and they want to bring back useful information back to their everyday salon. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really want to, I just really want to just like teach people, you know, just like useful things that they can, they can take back and, and apply every day. Cause I feel like, we're so hung up on competition and competition grooming and show grooming, but really like a very small percentage of, percentage of people do that. 
I feel like we need to focus more on the everyday, the salon grooming and the pet grooming and stuff like that. So that's kind of, that's kind of where the seminar is going to, going to be. It's going to be just, you know, for, for both, which is going to cover all the bases, which I'm excited about. Well, awesome. And that's in April, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure the, the exact dates, but it's in April for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I put that on episode three. So if you guys want to check out episode three, it has all the dates of uh, all the shows that are coming up. And that is in New Jersey. So definitely sign up for Brian's, uh, Brian and Phillips uh, class. But again, it's he's your backup. So it's really your show. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give you an opportunity to thank your sponsors or thank anybody right now before we get into your last question. All right. Yeah. So I just want to do like a shout out to obviously Team Love Groomers. Um, and Samuel Nelson for sponsoring me, and uh, and thank you to iGroom for uh, their sponsorship of myself as well as an ambassador. And yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, excellent. And then, uh, <clears throat> what is next for Brian Cuoco, and where can people contact you? Um, so, what's next? Um, what is next is hopefully definitely definitely competing more um my goal is to make groom team um and i think also what's next is i'm stepping into kind of doing some seminars and starting to teach people but at the same time i'm still learning and i just want to share my knowledge and what i've learned with with others um but I'm just excited to continue competing and uh, go be in the open level and try to really try to for a groom team and then eventually, hopefully, the travel team. Um, you can contact me on uh, my Facebook page um, or my Instagram. It's just at B Cuoco, C U O C O. Um, yeah. Well, excellent. Uh, Brian, on behalf of uh, Grooming Unleashed and our sponsor, Loyalty Pet Products, I want to thank you so much for your time on your day off. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I, are you going to be in uh, Orlando next month? Yeah, I definitely will be. I'm doing New England and I will be uh, in Orlando. All right. I, uh, we'll, we'll see you there and we'll have a, a vodka soda together. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Brian. All right, bye. bye. We appreciate all of you out there who are following and enjoying the podcast. If you could leave a glowing review for Grooming Unleashed, it would mean a lot to us, as well as sharing with your grooming friends, coworkers, bosses, and anyone else in the industry. Uh, it would mean a lot. It also would mean a lot if you would visit our sponsor, Loyalty Pet Products, at www.loyaltypetproducts.com. And don't forget, you can use the code UNLEASHED to save 10% off of your next order. Thank you very much for our sponsorship, Loyalty Pet Products, and thank you to all of you guys who are listening to us at Grooming Unleashed. We appreciate you and your support. Thank you very much for listening to Grooming Unleashed. And if you guys could share this with your grooming friends, it would be much appreciated. Please click on the subscribe button below, as well as if you hit the little bell, it will notify you when we have a new episode for you. Have a wonderful day, everybody.